I believe that we know that our theme is the candle in the dark. Amen. So, we want to start straight away. Father, thank you for the blessing of your word. Bless us in these few moments that we have together. Guide us by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Psalm 18. Psalm 18. Verse 28. For thou wilt light my candle. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Amen. Thou will light my candle and the Lord my God will lighten my darkness. So a candle is to light up the darkness. Amen. And God has called us to be lights in darkness. Amen. Can you hear me clearly? You sure you can hear me? Can you see me clearly? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Are you going to do what I'm saying? Or is it just something that we are just having? You sure? Okay. All right. Matthew chapter 4. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast, in the borders of Zabalon and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken that by Isaiah the prophet, saying, the land of Zabulon. All right? The land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan. Galilee of the Gentiles. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. They saw a great light. Amen. Amen. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. So you can see here, but I cannot see the screen. All right, we can see here. Um, the scripture which says that the people which sat in darkness saw what? A great light. They saw great light. Amen. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. Amen. Amen. So you can see that God why has this screen gone off? Are you working on it? Is, it? is there a special reason? I'm sure somebody's... Oh, really? Where's the projector? Down there? All right. I hope I'm not causing too many troubles. All right. So, let's go back to our scripture. That means put it back on the screen. Okay. The people which sat in darkness saw a great light. Isn't it true? Uh, Go to the verse before. The land of Zabulon and the land of Nephtalim by the way of the sea beyond Jordan. Galilee of the Gentiles. This is why we need to go to Israel. You see, you understand these words in all these places. They are all places. The land of Zabulon and Naphtali by the way of the sea. You see, beyond Jordan. Galilee of the Gentiles. This is a, these are places in Israel. When we go there, you see Zabulon, Nephtalim, you get it. And um, beyond Jordan, the river Jordan is there. And beyond Jordan. And then got by the way of the sea. It's around the sea. It's not it's really a sea, but it's a, it's a lake, but they call it a sea. Beyond Jordan, Galilee 
of the Gentiles. All right? And he says that, uh, verse, the next verse, the people which sat in darkness, you know, saw a great light, a great light. People were sitting in darkness. People were lost and they were sitting in the shadow of death. When you are in the shadow of something, you are near the thing. If This is my shadow here. So if you are, he's in my shadow. You are near me. But these guys are not in my shadow. Because they are not near me. You see, so this is my shadow. Can you see my shadow? Where's my shadow starting? Somewhere there. So it's coming. My shadow is coming. My shadow is coming. My shadow. Once you sit in my shadow, it means you are near me. So when the people sat in the shadow of death, it means that they were very near death. Yes. And to such people, a light is sprung up. That's why we call it a candle in the dark. Yes. A candle in the dark. Amen. So this is a prophecy of Jesus Christ. And this is your destiny. It's to be a Christian. It's to be like Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And uh, this is uh, beautiful and um, wonderful. And um, I believe that God has a great blessing for you. Now, Isaiah chapter 9. Now, when we go to Israel, and I want the First Love Church here to have a good reason to go to Israel for a tour. How many would like to go for a tour? Just the First Love Church in the UK. Because, Because when the group is large, it is not nice. Israel is not enjoyable with a lot of people. You have to be small enough to talk and share. When there are a lot of people, this one is walking slowly, this one is in a bus, this one hasn't had breakfast, this one is now coming. It's not nice at all. I hear, I, I, heard, I heard there was a group that went, 500 people, and they were like, um, so many buses. But if you go to Israel, we have to go for, with a reason. We have to see Zabulon and Capernaum and the land which sat in darkness where a great light arose. Kaba Shakaya. So these are the places, the things that we need to see and the things we need to hear. Amen. Amen. So in Isaiah, but we need to have a good reason to go. We can't just go sightseeing, making, having fun. There's enough fun in the world on television. We need to have a good reason. And I think that if the first love church in the UK are more than 5,000 people, because I know there's more than 1,000 people here, but if we are more than 5,000 people, first lovers, then I think that it is a good reason to celebrate in Israel. What do you think? Is it a good? Because we can't, we can't just go for nothing. We need young people, 5,000 of them saved. Yes, and there's more than 5,000 around who don't know their left from their right. Amen. So, do you think we can have a good reason? So, you think about it. I'll make an agreement with you. And uh, if you are able to achieve it, then that's it. We will, be, we will go to, we will go, I'll walk with you to the Valley of Kidron. Do you know the Valley of Kidron? Yeah. I'll take you there. That's where Jesus walked through. Yeah. When he was going from Get, Get Hermione all the way to Kefa's house. I'll take you to Kefa's house. From there, we'll go to Pilate's. And then from there, we'll go to the Calvary. 
How many want to see Calvary? You see, these are words you, you, you know them better. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 9. So think about it. I'm sure by the end of the camp, you'll be sure whether you want to go or not. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 1. Verse 1. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nations all right now notice verse 1 it says nevertheless her dimness the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation the dimness is the level of darkness there are levels of darkness how many know that there are levels of darkness sometimes it's dark but you can see sometimes it's dark 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 and then there's black darkness which is quite, you can't even see your hand. And you stay awake, you put your eyes on for a long time, still you are not seeing. That's really deep darkness. And for those who, are, who watch the stars and the planets, we have what we call light pollution. That when there are lights around, even though it's dark, it, it pollutes the sky because you need darkness to see the stars. Because the stars are right there. But the sun's brightness wipes out all the stars. You can't see them. All right? So darkness, it says, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation. So the level of darkness will not, going to be, will not be like that level. Then verse 2. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. So this is the prophecy that is being fulfilled in Matthew when Jesus came from Isaiah chapter 9. It was quoted in Matthew chapter 4. Are you with me? All right. And the people that walk in darkness have seen a great light and they that dwell in the shadow of death upon them hath the light shined. All right. Now, when the light comes, what happens? Verse 3. Thou hast multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy in harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder the rod of his oppressor as in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born. For unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given. You recognize these verses somehow? Yeah, these are verses in the Bible about Jesus. And the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government, and peace there shall be no end and upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the Lord will perform this the Lord sent a word into Jacob and it hath lighted upon Israel Amen Amen. now how many of you are recognizing some of the words yeah that is talking about Jesus. So you can see from Isaiah chapter 9, from verse 1, 
he says the dimness will not be as you thought. And then in verse 2, he starts to talk about and mention the areas where the great light is going to come. Now there are towns and places in the world and cities in the world where you are going to go and that city is waiting for you. You see, this place, put it back there in verse 2, is telling us the places, you know, a great light has shined. I think it's in verse 1, mentioning the names of the place. Yes, the land of Zebulon and Naphtali, you know, in Galilee. It's quite specific. This was like hundreds of years before Jesus came. Yes, hundreds of years before Jesus came. He prophesied not only about the light, but the place that would receive the light. Like this country, this town, this place, this city, these people, they are going to have light. So there are places that are waiting for you to come. Look, we are not here. If you are here to solve your personal problems, as soon as we close this first session, you can pack your things and go away. You get it? You know, God has shown me how to solve personal problems. Solve personal problems by just moving on and continuing to look for God. Your personal weights and burdens will never end. You can ask the grown-ups. You can ask your parents. You can ask them to tell you. Parents advise only up to a point. They don't say most of their problems. Some of your mothers and fathers, I tell you, they were disco lovers and boogie, boogie kings and queens. But they don't say everything. You get what I'm saying? Because they can't say everything. They can only say a part. A part that is appropriate as a grown-up and a parent. You know? And the problems they have, they don't really say. They haven't really said it all. You get what I'm saying? But there have been so many problems. Because I've been a pastor of some of your parents. And I know, I know the things. We are, oh, we've been around for a long time. It's not been easy. You get it? Yeah, so we, problems don't really go away. Yeah, they don't really go away. They, they are solved, they are managed, they are controlled, and in spite of them, we work for God. So I don't really believe in sitting here to do career counseling, how to your career, your future, your job, your money, your days, your financial, your problem, this, that. Look, even your pornographies and all this. <laughs> look, let's focus on the work. You see that they, they, when a tree dies or dies, the leaves themselves fall off. Wow. You don't have to speak to leaves. I say, come down, just die. And the leaf will <laughs> fall down by itself. All right? So if you feel, if you are really concerned about your personal life and who you will marry, who you will do this, who the, Look, as you serve God, all these problems have their way of being solved. If you focus on them, it rather becomes bigger and you become more confused and more anxious. And the more anxious you become, the uglier you are. The less attractive you are. People don't employ you. People don't like you. People don't choose you. Because we can see a worried person so if they marry you, they are just marrying problems. Yes. Being in a relationship with you is a project. It's not something to enjoy. It's a project. It's a burden. It's a mountain. It's a valley. It's a hill. It's a valley. Hey. Hmm. So, let us rather consider the way of the sea, the Galilee, the land of the Gentiles that are sitting in darkness. And as we do, huh, all these things shall be added to us. Amen. All right. Are you putting this screen back on? Have I done something wrong? Right. So let's see the effect of the light. And I'm saying that there is a town. There is a place waiting for you to come and be a light. Amen. Amen. Back to the verse on the screen, please. Nevertheless, yeah, Naphtali, Zebulon, they are going to see a light. Beautiful. Verse 2. 
People that walk in darkness. People that walk in darkness. People that walk in darkness. There are many people in darkness. How many have been in darkness? A young person like you. In darkness. How much more somebody who is 30 years old? And 40 years old. Can you imagine the darkness? Huh? I tell you, if you cry, you've seen darkness. How much more somebody who is 30, who is 40, and then 50. That's why they become quiet. It's the darkness, the difficulties. But people that sit in darkness see a great light. All right? And those that sit in the shadow, in the land of the shadow of death. Shadow of death. Death is nearby. Just one second from death. Many people don't know that death is very close. Very close. Recently we had some young guys, they went swimming and then they just, in just one second they were dead. They were dead. Yeah. One just like that. Just in the sea. Atlantic Ocean. It was so fast. Swimmers. One was a swimmer, one was not. So, death can be very close. And when death is close, you don't even know that it's close. Yeah. Because God keeps us from knowing when death is coming. Because if you knew you're going to die on Tuesday or Friday, you're not be happy today. At least you're happy today, isn't it? And you go up to Tuesday, you're flowing. So there's, there's no problem. You can at least be happy this week or next week or whenever. You get it? Because it's not good to know you're going to die. And that's why God protects us. And he says that just prepare to meet me at any time. Yeah. It's not a good thing. People who know they are going to die, they really suffer. They suffer. They die a thousand deaths before they actually die. They go through their funerals. They go through their wakeupings. They go through the tributes. They go through what people will say, what will happen, all the spirit. They, they live through it. They tremble. They fear in the night, in the day. I know what I'm saying. Yeah. Before they actually die. It's not a small thing. They think of their enemies who come to see them dead. They say, no, I don't want this person to see me dead. And then they think of their friends. They cry before they die. So God doesn't let you know. He just allows you to live and wants you to be ready at any time. Because God can call you at any time. Don't think you will die when you are old. You know, I've done funerals. Most of the people I've done funerals for are young people. Yeah, because... Most of the people that I've known who have ever died in the church, the whole church have been young, young people or youngish people. I haven't really had many old people dying. Yeah, I haven't had many old people. The old people whose funerals I've attended, but the ones I officiated, the ones that concerned me as a pastor, I'm always young or youngish. And was death you wouldn't expect. Yeah. So, there you are. So don't be thinking, oh, this is for the 70s. I've got 50 years more. No, think of now. Shadow of death means death is, death is near all of us. And years ago, I came to know death was near. At first, I thought that by being a pastor, I'm, I'm protected. You know, my God, I'm so precious to God. God sees I'm very important, you know, and like if he kills me now, he's going to lose a lot. <laughs> it's true. It's a way of thinking. It's like if he kills me now, he's going to lose one of his players. And I don't think he would like to lose me now. So I'm safe. Yeah. Till I had an accident. Where we almost died. That's when I, I, I came close to me. I saw that, hey, I could die at any time that God chooses. 
No man, and no one is important. And I've seen, because death is also a mystery, that sometimes you have troublemakers growing bigger and living longer. And those who are even doing the right thing, you see them being removed. It's also a mystery that I've seen. It's what I've seen in my life practically. So it also bumps your mind out and you stop thinking in the wrong way. That, oh, you know, now that I'm doing this and that, it means, no. God, everybody, that's why you can't easily pray for somebody to die because everybody has the least that has been given to the person. Yeah. So even the greatest troublemakers, if God has given you 50 years or 60 years, you'll be allowed to live through all those years. Yeah. Finish your whatever you came to do. Even if it's bad things. And some have been given short leases. No, I mean, let's face it. When you come to the airport, they stamp seven days. Another person comes, they stamp two years. One person comes, they stamp. So when you are born, you are stamped on your passport. This number of years is for you. Yeah. That's how some people live long and some people live short. It's a divine decision. And good people like John the Baptist, Jesus Christ, and so on, had very short lives. And some had long lives, good people. Some saw many sorrows. And some were made to die to save them. So, the shadow of death is not just those in Zabulon. All of us, in a sense, are in the shadow of death. That means near death. Yes. So anyway, the people in the shadow of death, upon them has a light shined. Now, God has a plan for the people in the shadow of death. And the plan is to shine a light into the shadow of death, into the blackness of that darkness. And help them. Now what is going to happen exactly. When those in the shadow of death. And in the darkness see the light. Look at verse 3. It says. Thou hast multiplied. Thou hast done what? Multiplied the nation. So the first effect is. Multiplying the nation. So the multiplication in the kingdom of God. Is the first effect when the light begins to shine. Thou hast multiplied the nation. Multiplied the nation. All right? So, the light of God is shining here and is shining in your lives and has multiplied the nation. That's why you are here. The church of God is multiplied. And you are the church of God that has multiplied to be here because a light has shined in your lives. The light of Jesus Christ and the light that has come through your pastor who is here with you and who has been preaching to you and through the light of other pastors and through the light of some of you who have spoken to others about Jesus. Yes, and it has multiplied the nation. So the first effect is that it will multiply the nation or the kingdom. A nation is the kingdom. And then it says, and as men, it has for, for the joy before thee according to the joy of the harvest. So what God is saying here is that Number two is that there will be increased joy of the harvest. An increase in the joy of the harvest. You can see that was multiply the nation and now to increase the joy or into colon, they joy before thee according to the joy in harvest. So God increases the joy in harvest. As and as men rejoice 
when they divide the spoil. So we, we are increased in the joy of the harvest. All right? So the joy of winning souls. Now in the first love church, we like to win souls. Is it not true? And there is some happiness in the winning of souls. Is that not so? Yes. But some people don't want, they are not happy to win souls. Some people are happy to just hear about money. Hear about prosperity. Hear about getting the latest whatever. And most of them have nothing. They just have debts. Up to the neck. Full of debts and mortgages. But God is saying he's increasing the joy in harvest. Not joy of the harvest. You see he says the joy in the harvest. So there is joy in harvesting souls. So God in his, according to the joy in harvest. So God is increasing our joy in harvest. And it's supernatural. God is going to make you happy to harvest souls. Amen. Yes. And all other things will be side effects. You think I'm poor? I don't think I'm poor. I'm not aiming to have money. But I don't think I'm poor. I don't think God has ever let me be poor for serving him. Yes. That's it. Riches is in many, many things. Yeah. Including money. It's one of the riches. Don't be thinking riches is peace, riches is humility, riches is whatever. Riches, riches. It's also riches. <laughs> Are you listening? Yes. Yeah. It increases the joy in heaven. But you see, to be happy for souls to be won is a wonderful thing. And it takes the grace of God to increase the joy in harvest. So we are increasing joy in harvest. And that's a great blessing. Any church which is ha- happy to win souls is a good church. And a church which has forgotten to win souls is a church which has lost the Holy Spirit. Yeah. No matter what spirit they say, there is the Holy Spirit is not the one, the spirit they are talking about. Now, the next one. It says, and thou hast broken the yoke of his burden. So the third effect is to break the yoke of the burdens or to take away, to take away the burdens that are there. The burdens that are there for the people. God is taking away the burdens, amen, of people. How many feel that burdens have been taken off your life since you knew Jesus? What a blessing. Many burdens are taken away from our lives. So God is taking away burdens. So when the light comes, burdens go away. But other than that, there's no solution to most of the problems. There's no solution. Even to this problem of being happy. You see, happiness is like riches. It's very elusive. To be happy is a very mysterious thing. That is why in First Love Church, the, the boys and girls marriages in the First Love Church are the best marriages ever. Because, because, because the type of marriage talks you hear in the preaching are not um, raincoat, it's not raincoat preaching. You see, when you are wearing a raincoat, there is something under the raincoat. And the raincoat is just the superficial. So that's why the first love brothers and sisters are the best to marry. Yes, because our, our marriage counseling, of which 90% is in the preaching, is not preaching, raincoat preaching, just on the outside. Yes, so that's why when you are in the first love church and you see a sister, you see more than what you see on the outside. 
because you are hearing about the inside and the people that Jesus didn't like at all on earth were the Pharisees who had outside looking nice but inside was dead men's bones outside looks beautiful but in reality it's just whitewash over something terrible bones beneath and that is how a lot of ladies are because of the extra time and effort to look good to look good not to be good to look good That is the hypocrisy that Jesus was talking about. You look good, but it is bones. Yes. You look good. You look nice. For nice, you look nice. Now there are many things to make you look nice. The technology is there. Yes, the technology is there. It's higher, higher technology. That is why now everybody has hair. Everybody has hair. Whereas in reality, they don't actually have hair. Everybody has a shape. Everybody has this. Everybody has that. But in reality, it's not so. Yes. Is it not true? Yeah. I don't know how we got into that. Let's go back. All right. So, God is taking away burdens. Yes. I was telling you that burdens, happiness, is elusive. It's like a rat. It's like a mouse. It's not so easy to catch. You know, you can run around in the house trying to catch a mouse. I'll catch you, I'll catch you, I'll catch you. you. Those of you who have ever had mice, do you have mice in England? You have mice in England too? I thought you were only in Africa. Really? <laughs> every 10 meters there's a rat. In London, every 10 meters there's a rat. Underground. Then why did you get more cats? Anyway. The cats don't eat mice. No, African cats eat mice. So, to be happy is not to have everything. Because people have everything and are not happy people. They have everything, they are not happy. So then you wonder, those who don't have are not happy. Those who have everything are not happy. So who is happy? And where do we get happiness from? So that's why following Jesus and finding the light takes away the burdens of this life. The burdens. So God is going to use you to take away burdens from people's lives. Amen. Amen. Do you want God to use you to take away burdens from people's lives? People are going to thank you and stop you by the roadside and say, I just wanted to say how much of a blessing you have been to my life. And people are going to stop you and say, if I hadn't met you, if I hadn't known you, I don't know where I would be today. People are going to thank you. In their lives, they will thank you for meeting you. What a blessing. And I'm not talking about me. I'm I'm not talking about Bishop Richard. I'm talking about you. People are going to thank you for knowing you. And what a blessing you have been. Because you've been a candle in the dark to them. Hallelujah. So burdens are going to be lifted. Power is going to come out of you. And people's lives are going to change. 
just because they met you and I, I have news for you there is a Zabulon and there is a Nephtalim that are waiting to hear of your arrival at the airport I said there is a Zabulon and a Nephtalim that are waiting to hear that you just landed at the airport there is a train station that is waiting to hear that you just landed somebody is waiting to hear that you just bought your ticket and that you are on your way Nephtalin and Zabulon and I think I would like to go to Nephtalin and Zabulon with some Zabulonians <laughs> are there any Zabulonians here who would like to go to Israel maybe I should just do just missionaries first lab missionaries that would be a smaller group yeah people on a mission yeah there must be some reason for us to go there we can't just go for having fun hmm. okay number four take away burdens and number four oppression and the oppressor is going to be broken out of your li- out of people's lives because he says and now Thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, verse 4, and the rod of his oppressor, all right, as in the day of Midian. All right, so oppression, the rod of the oppressor is going to be broken. Amen. Amen. Now, what is oppression? Oppression is tension, pressure. How many sometimes feel some kind of pressure on your life? Yeah. You know why that happens? It's the presence of a person. It's the presence of a devil. Demons. You see, the Bible says how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit, with power. And he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil the presence of the devil is what brings pressure sickness tension fear a lot of the feelings that we have is the presence of a person a devil now devils are like persons a devil is like having an animal which has intelligence that's the best way I can describe devil why do I say that it's like a human in an animal and many of the films we've watched that we have been intrigued by have actually portrayed something like the devil why do I say that you see Acts 10 38 how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the devil. Oppressed by the devil. Devil oppresses. He presses you, stresses you, pressures. Yeah. Oppressed by the devil. Now, all through the Bible, devils are described as animals. Yeah. Dragon. Really, you, you, I, I don't really know where the devil is described as a person. I describe as dragon. Remember, a dragon, that old serpent, described as snakes, dragon, described as flies, the lord of flies, Beelzebub, described as frogs. He says, and I, throw, I saw three devils like frogs coming out of um, whatever. And then he's described as a um, lion. The devil comes as a roaring lion. He's described as like death. He says, I saw death riding on a horse. You know, the, the rider. Well, it's, it's described as a horse rider. And the horse, it was called death. So the horse and the rider, and something bad, that are galloping, trotting, cantering towards you. You are escaping in Jesus' name. Yeah. Receive the prophecy, so. How 
However, the Bible describes devils as intelligent people who know things and can talk. So when Jesus was casting out the devil out of the madman of Gadara, he said, who I said, we are many. Then he was speaking. So animals don't usually speak. So this is like a speaking animal. Very intelligent. And, and so animal with, with, with an aim. With especially where they want to stay. Don't send us out of this country. And Jesus described the devil as someone who sees people as houses. And usually a person doesn't stay in another person. But an animal stays in a house. It's like a dog house or a kennel or a cage or something. You see? And he said, I'll go back to my house. The devil said, I'll go back to my house. And I'll stay there. And then... <laughs> They know things. They know people. They know things. When the devils, when these sons of Sceva went to cast out um, the devil from this man, the demon said, look, Jesus, we've read about him. We've heard of him, what he did. He's doing this, this, and that, and we know him. Paul, too, we are all aware. We have all received information, what he's doing and all. But you, we have not received any information. How can you tell us to come out of the, our houses? Do you think somebody would take it lightly if you go and not say, come out of your house? So devil, they know things. So the best I can describe the devil for you to understand will be someone who can talk, someone who knows things, someone who's very intelligent. Very good. In fact, the Bible warns us more about his cleverness. Yes, beware of the wiles of the devils. Very clever, intelligent, planning, plotting, snares, traps, sudden things. Hmm. So, the best films that can help you to understand the devil, and which are most probably depictions of the devil, are films like Jaws. If you've ever watched Jaws, it's like Jaws is about a shark. And the shark seemed to have a mind. Yes, the shark was fighting. How many have not watched Jaws? You've not watched it? Raise your hand. So after, uh, it's a Macané film now. You can you go and get it uh, and watch it. You have to watch it. Uh, you watch it, see, the shark seemed to be thinking and planning and it was attacking and to come and to go and it seemed to aim for the person. Jurassic Park. You see, the, the, the dinosaur seemed to be thinking. It was looking. They would turn the head. Go here and say, hey! Then it would go like this. It would come. Chile! Say, what type of creature is thinking? Intelligent. And which other one again? Um, they have another. They have, there are more animal films like that. Ali, alligator. I don't know if you've watched Alligator. Yeah. Alligator, Jurassic Park. Anaconda. <laughs> yeah. Anaconda, there's anaconda and anacondas. Yeah. Those are wild. You you'll be in the you'll be watching the film and see that the, the snake is moving by. It seems to know things, it seems to understand things. That's the best way. So when someone is oppressed by the devil, it's like there's one of these very intelligent creatures, you get it, who seems to know what he's doing and is targeting somebody who knows about you. And that's why sometimes when you marry someone, there can be a, a lot of tension because you are three. Yes, you are three in the marriage. Yes. You are three in the marriage. You and the person you've married and the spirit that is there. Yes. Yes, you are three. And sometimes you can marry and then a third one will come and up and you become three. So there's a lot of stress and a lot of tension and pressure. An oppression. 
because of the presence of something that is there with the marriage in it. Yeah. And you see, you have people, you know, myself, but this doesn't concern Christians. That's not concern Christians. That's not concern. Doesn't concern Christian. You know the Bible says, "Can a fountain bring forth both bitter and sweet?" You say you have the Holy Spirit. Does the Holy Spirit possess you all the time? Has He possessed you? Let us be honest. A lot of time you are not possessed by the Holy Spirit. So which other spirit is possessed? So there, there are gaps and spaces. There are gaps and spaces for things to come in and you need to be careful now oppression ends when the power of God the light comes to people's eyes. especially if you are humble and you listen a lot of devils leave you look preaching alone can set you free because you see Jesus said the spirit of the Lord is upon me has anointed me to preach deliverance so Deliverance, most deliverance comes from preaching. It, it comes from preaching. He has anointed me to preach deliverance. Most deliverance, deliverance from evil, evil spirit comes from preaching. To preach deliverance. Yes. So just sitting in church and being in church, things drop off you. How many have seen a space spacecraft going to space? You see, when it goes up, then some things drop off. Yeah, those are the rockets and the fuel tanks. And then it, it drops off and it goes. 8.5 minutes, all the fuel is finished. And the rockets have finished their work and then it goes. It's enough to lift it into space in 8 minutes. Yeah. So you see that although it looks attached to you, it drops off. Wow. Amen. You are declared free from every form of oppression. Now, to change is possible. To change is possible. And real change happens to people who are saved. Yes. Don't think, if you are not changing, don't think that Christianity is not real. You are not real. Christianity is real, but you are not real. There are real changes that happen to people. People really change. People really change. People really change. They stop smoking. They stop drinking. They stop taking drugs. They stop homosexuality. They stop fornicating. They stop stealing. They stop sniffing. They stop lying. People really change. So if you are not changing, You are not changing. But don't say Christianity is not real. It is very real. Yes. It's very real. So the light is coming to set a lot of people free. And you are the light for somebody's life. Can I have an amen? Amen. All right. Let's go on. Number five. The candle in the dark. Is coming to do great battles. Notice, for every battle of the warrior is with confused noise. Mm. Every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this battle shall be with burning and fuel of fire. So, speaking of this great light that is coming into the world, he started, suddenly starts to speak about a battle. Because the coming of a, a light into the world is the coming of a big fight. Are you ready for a big fight? Are you sure you are ready for a big fight? If you are not ready to fight, you must resign in during the break. We are going to take a break soon and then you can resign from Christ. How many are ready to resign from Christ? 
God forbid. Say God forbid. Those at the back are not saying God. The, the, the last row there. I'm not saying God forbid. You see, I told you, don't sit at the back. Don't make yourself a backbencher. You know? Okay, sit down. I want to watch those people at the back there. Say God forbid. Say God forbid. Those are the back, the, 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 the behind those people. They are not part of us. Are you part of us? I say, God forbid. It's very weak. Didn't you sense some weakness? Say, God forbid. Uh huh. Maybe the sound is not coming to you. Can the sound people check? Stand at the back and check. Maybe the sound is not going there. Is the sound coming to you? Check it. Che- check in mic one, two, three, four. Is it good sound? No, come to this side. These are the people here. These people. Say, God forbid, God forbid. Are you hearing it? We should ch- adjust the thing a bit, right? Oh, it's okay. It's okay. All right. Hmm. <laughs> no dragon can come near you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So a candle in the dark is a big fight to be a candle in the dark. Then he said, normally, the fight, look at it. Normally, the fight is with um, confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this time, it's going to be with fuel and burning. Wow. Now, I want you to notice something fantastic. All right. Every battle is with confused noise. How many want to really be a candle in the dark? There's going to be confusion in your life all the time. Yes. You never be sure what you are doing. Yeah. You never be sure whether you are doing the right thing. Because a candle in the dark is a very lonely job. Yeah. Everybody is sleeping. You are the only one who is shining. You are the only one who is bright. And everybody else is dark. And it's like, ah, why? You are disturbing us. We want to rest. You've put on the light. You would have thought that everybody would be happy to have a light, but... Many people don't like a light when they are sleeping. Put out the light. And when you marry, you find one person likes the light, one person doesn't like the light. This is how it is. Confusion. (laughs) Yes. So every battle is with confused noise. And if you are not experiencing that confusion, you are probably not in the battle. How many sometimes are confused? Sometimes you even wonder, like, should I even be here? Like, do I fit into such a group? I mean, raise your hand if you, if you really wonder. So like, I mean, do I even fit? What this man is talking about, candle in the dark. Well, I am the darkest hole in the world. And he's talking about being a candle in the dark. I am the darkness. I'm the darkness in the, in the church. I did a candle. And he's talking about becoming a candle. Somebody said, I need three candles. <laughs> that is how it is to be a Christian, and a pastor, a minister. They're always not sure what's wrong with you. That the person next to you must be very holy compared to you. How many have ever thought that the person next to you? So, so you know what? Why don't you find out from the person next to that? Why did you raise your hand? What are you thinking about? 
I raise my hand. You also raise your hand. How come you don't feel? And I also don't feel. So who is qualified? Guys, how many of you don't like you have certain feelings and sensations and you just wonder that I, I do not belong in this holy raise your hand if you are a brother and you have such experiences. You are raising your legs as well. You are jumping. You are jumping. Yes. It is that is how the battle is. There's confusion all the time. And confusion means different thoughts come into your mind and you're not clear. Your mind is not clear. Yes. So if you are having that confusion, then congratulate your neighbor. Say, wow. wow, wow. You are welcome to the battle. You are welcome to the battle. Excuse me, as for the sisters, they don't have such they don't have such confusion. They don't have such confusion. They look very pure. Sisters are pure, you see. Okay, sit down. Sit down. The sisters feel very pure. How many brothers feel that the sisters look purer than we? They really look pure. And we look unholy. Don't worry. God is with you. All right. confused noise now if the confusion has been so much up to now eh, then the confusion that is going to come as you shine brighter it's going to be even more amazing this time it's going to be with fuel and fire at first there was noise yes and garments rolled in blood but this time yes it's going to be with burning that means it's going to heighten yeah the more you get closer to serving god the more the conflict around you increases yes and the confusion conflicting thoughts of whether the right thing is happening. Is God with you? Is God not with you? Is God angry with you? Does God want to kill you? What am I doing wrong, Lord? If you were with me, will this be like this? Will this happen like this? Will this be that way? If I was a good person, would I be experiencing A, B, C, D? So this time is going to be even more And that's why I'm saying that you have to learn how to serve God. You know, as a young person, you know, you see, when you are young, the feelings that you have and the intensity of the feeling, if it is about a hundred, as you get older, it drops, but it drops slowly. But you don't, so you don't notice it. But it drops. Your parents may be having an intensity of feelings of about 20. 15, 12 to 20 percent of what you feel. Yes. Like as you are happy, 
finding a beloved, getting married, you'll be surprised that even you, your parents don't desire to be you. They don't desire to be you. Yes. They don't have that feeling that, oh, I wish I was also now going to get married. No. You see, when you finish secondary school, you don't feel like going back to Form 1. You don't feel like going back to start from first year. You see somebody in first year, you see somebody starting from Form 1, you don't feel, oh, I wish I was back in Form 1. No. You think of the exams he's going to write. <laughs> it's true. So, I mean, Imani has got a beloved, he's looking for it, but I don't feel like being him. No, no, I, don't, I don't feel like, I'm not, it's not attractive to me because the, the level of feelings that I'm experiencing is far less than what he's experiencing. Yeah. So, when you are a young person, a large number of the confu- uh, amount of the confusion comes from your feelings. Yeah. You see, when you are young, there's confusion from source A. As you get older, confusion comes from source B and C and D. Uh, the other reasons for confusion. But when you are young, the confusion is, is wild. Like you say, no, you are not a good man. You are, you are bad. You are very bad. You'll be sitting there, you'll be saying, nobody else is having an erection, only you. But the others are also having erections. To, to, to your surprise. Yes. <laughs> you'll be shocked. But as you get older, more confusion comes from other places. And your duty is to be a candle in the dark or shine in the midst of confliction, conflicting voices and words. I always question, do I qualify? Yeah. Look at this guy, how he's preaching. If I could preach like that, then I qualify. I always thought I couldn't be an evangelist because of Bishop Duncan Williams. Because when I heard him preaching, it was so powerful. He spoke one time at at a Commonwealth Hall in um, University of Ghana. And he he was down and everybody was up on a hill. Like it was like a place you stand, you were standing around up. Hey! He told them how he put his hand in the fire. How he used to go from this club to this club to this club. And that day, wicked people, I mean, there was a guy, I think his name was Whiskey. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, Whiskey. He gave his life to her. We were, we were shocked. We were, we just, we were just standing there. He, he, gave their, yeah, he gave their life to Jesus. We were all standing there. We couldn't, we couldn't believe it. So vandals and wild people, they just repented. Because he told them that he is more than what they are. Yeah. So when I heard this couple of preach, I said, there is no way on earth I can ever preach like that. So that thought alone, would keep me from not trying to evangelize with my small life's experiences, which I have not been to Pussycat and Bungo and all these places. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you is that there are always thoughts that come to you that tell you, not you. Not you. Him maybe, but not you. Yes. He may be, but not you. Yeah. And that thing increases. So as you're trying to step forward, thought to come, you're not anointed. There are anointed people, but you, you know you are not anointed. You know it. Reasons why you are not anointed. One, two, three, four. Yes. Reasons why you are not anointed. Yeah. If you were anointed, there would be this, there would be this, there would be this, there would be this. Yes. 
That is how it is. Look, sit on the floor here. You are blocking people's view. Come, sit. Sit, sit down. Sit down. Too many. Okay, sit down. Sit down. You are blocking somebody's view. Are you listening? Yes. yes. So, how many are ready to preach in the midst of confusion yes. still? You still confused? And something is telling you. You know, when I was growing up, most of the people that I knew in the ministry were Americans, like high level ministry. And always the thought came to me you know, you're not American. You don't speak like an American, you know. <laughs> You ain't got what they got, man. <laughs> Glory, to Glory to God. You guys are doing a great job. <laughs> they were always telling me, you are not American. You are not this. You are not that. So sometimes you feel different. How many sometimes feel different? Yeah. Don't let that make you into Judas. Judas was the only person from another place. And I'm sure the devil told him, you see, you are different. You are different. You are different. You don't fit in. You don't qualify. These are good people. These are good people around. I tell you, the guy to you is, is a virgin. This other guy is a virgin. You, you are not a virgin. You know yourself. You are a thousand times away from being a Don't listen to any of that nonsense. You qualify. Tell somebody, you qualify, you qualify. You belong. Yeah, you are the main person here. You are the main person. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to believe. But if you believe, you'll be a candle in the dark. Hallelujah. All right. Now, continuing. I'm giving you the effects of a candle in the dark. Yes. Number one, a candle in the dark will multiply the nation. Number two, a candle in the dark will increase the joy in harvest. Number three, a candle in the dark will do what? Take away the burdens. Number four, candle in the dark will break oppression. And number five, candle in the dark will do great battles. Great battles I have fought. Amen. Candle in the dark. Beautiful. Now, the next one, amazing. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. Amen. A candle in the dark is as a humble child. Yes. And to us a child is born. He says he said for unto us or because a child is born. So a light has come into the world because a child is born. Even the first love church is a light that has come. Why? Because a child is born. Children are born into the work of God. It has brought a light even into the whole of Lighthouse Chapel International. It's like a light has come. The children, the children, for unto us a child is born. Child, children are now preachers. And if you are here, uh, I want you to know that God's destiny for you is to become a preacher. Amen. Amen. God's destiny for you is to become a missionary. Amen. Yes. I don't have to say to you, why are you not a missionary? Because you are going to be a missionary. Amen. Yeah. You are not a missionary. I know you are not a missionary because you haven't either finished something or finished whatever. But I know you are going to be a missionary. You are going to be a mission. How can you be in this world without a mission? You are an aimless star. You are a disconnected ship. You are a ship without an engine. 
Like a car with a BMW without an engine. Just seats and seats and air condition, but no engine. Hmm? No power, no movement. Mission. God, God has a mission for you, wherever the mission field is. And no, no city, nowhere will be too far or too difficult. Can I have an amen? amen? And you see, a light has come because the children have come. Yes, you can look at the scriptures, for unto us. For, the first word is for. is a word for because because unto us a child is born. Yeah. Like all of you could be drunk this morning. All of you could be high this morning. All of you could be HIV positive this morning. Yes. God, God forbid. A light has come because children are born into God's house and those children are going to work for God. For unto us a child is born. What a blessing. Daughters and sons. For unto us a child is born. 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 A light has come into my life because my son is with me in the ministry. It brings a light. It's like a light has come on. And the children who have come, who want to serve God, it's like a light. A child want to serve God? You don't want to smoke? You don't want to drink? You don't want to, be, to have sex? You don't want to use your anus for sex? Don't you? You, don't want to do you want to preach? You want to work for God? Then a light has come into the darkness. A great light. A great light has come into the world. Yes. That's what it means. That's what it means. For unto us a child is born. Not a grown up is born. A child is born. Yes. Look. Jesus Christ. The Bible says he began to be about 30. Roughly. So it means between 29, 30, maybe 31. But. Always it occurs to me Jesus was 29. I, I believe Jesus was 29. Yes, because he says he was, he began to be about 30. If you can put that scripture, Matthew says he began to be about 30. Yes. Look, yeah, he began to be about 30. <laughs> it's about 30 years old. That was about 29. 29. So he was in his 20s. So, and he was a wild preacher. <laughs> For unto us a child is born. And he appointed apostles in his 20, when he was in his 20. And the people who were following him, do you think they were elderly? His fathers, do you think that the fathers, fathers and mothers and, and grand aunties and so on were following him? No. Do you think Mary Magdalene and Joanna and all these people were old ladies? They were young, pretty girls. They were beautiful. I mean, I don't want to call them chicks, but they were, they were, they were beauties. They were flashing beauties. Kaba Shakaya. Yeah. And he appointed them. He appointed them as apostles. The 500 following him. 500 who saw him. All those 500 were 500 young people. Yeah. The, five, the, the older people were the Pharisees, which means far to see. Yeah. And the Sadducees, which means sad to see. They were tradition. They, they were always talking about the traditions, what we've been doing for years. And Jesus came and preached. Young man, five 
500 people, Bible says, 500 people saw him when he, 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 he rose from the dead. He was seen of 500. They were following the 120. Oh, he's a young man with 120 followers in the upper room. You will have many followers in your life in the name of Jesus. You have many followers. 120 were waiting for him in the upper room. For the, he told them, stay in the house. Uh, 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 something will happen to you. Stay in the house. They all believed him. They all believed him. A young boy. He was, he was, he was, he was not afraid of dying. He said, I'll, I'll die soon. You wait and see. I'll die soon. Young man. Oh. I mean, he was not talking about, so I'm, we are, I'm going to be like those, I'm going to be like those, says somebody, and then we are going to Morocco for a honeymoon. Ah! Jesus wasn't planning on going to know Morocco for no honeymoon. Jesus wasn't going to know Morocco for no honeymoon. He, he was planning to die. He said, I'm going to die. You guys, I'm going to die. Yeah. He was a wild person. I want to be more like you. Jesus, I want to be more, I want to be more like Jesus, I want to be a vessel you were through, I want to be more like you, Jesus, I want to be more, I want to be more like Jesus. I want to be more like Jesus. I want to be a vessel to one. I want to be more. All right. All right. Yeah. So Jesus Christ was a young person. And it was like a light had come on in the world. Because a young person did not just want to play basketball, did not just want to play soccer, did not just want to watch soccer or go to the stadium, drink beer. Young person did not just want to smoke, but a different type of young person had come around. A person with feelings of sure. Hey, Jesus had feelings. Ooh. If he didn't have feelings, he would not have been tempted. Yes. The Bible says he was tempted in all points. That means he had sexy feelings. Can you imagine Jesus having sexy feelings? The Bible says he was tempted. Can you find that scripture? He was tempted in all points. All points. And high priest, but he was in all points tempted. So all the points of temptation he had. It. Jesus considered marriage. He, oh yeah, because it's a temptation. You look and say, like, look at the buxom beauty. <laughs> Do you know what is a buxom majesty? Bugsum means pleasantly plump with pleasant curves. Kaba Shakaya. He was tempted with fornication. Yes, yes, he saw them around and said, Wow, this is what I need as a young man. If he felt like resting, he also felt like having some love. He was having so much hatred. And he also felt like having some love and some peace. He wanted to go on the, on the Sea of Galilee with one of, this, one of the ladies and just the two of them on the, out on the boat together. He was, he, was, he was also feeling, having feelings. Wow. All points. But a light had come because somebody 
with all the feelings and all the confusion had decided to shine the light and only concentrate on that. Yeah, that's the difference. But not that he wasn't having those tendencies or the feeling. Even Elijah, you know, he was a man of like passions. Like he was just like that, which means he was just like that too. And what those English King James words, it means he was just like that too. <laughs> just like that. Tell someone just like that too. Tell someone just like you. Elijah was just like you. Hey. How many find it difficult to believe? It's difficult to believe. I also find it difficult to believe, but I have to believe it. Just as I believe in salvation, I have to believe that these people had all these problems too. Because it, it's necessary to believe it so that you can also press on. Yeah. And make it. Amen. Amen. God is going to use you. 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 Amen. A light has come to the world. Amen. A child is born. Amen. I said a child is born. Amen. And what type of child is good child? Amen. A special child. Amen. Yes, a special child. Amen. And the people in Zabulon and Nephtalim, they are waiting for you. Amen. Tell your neighbor, Zabulon is waiting for you, Nephtalim, and Nephtalim are also waiting for me. Uh, I'll be, tell, tell, and answer, say, I'll be there. No, no problem. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'm on my way to Zabulon, and I'm on my way to Nephtalim. I'm on my way to Zabulon, and I'm on my way to Nephtalim. Give the Lord a shout of praise. All right, sit down. Now, a light, how many do you have? Six. Candle in the dark is to multiply the nation, is to increase the joy in the harvest. Candle in the dark is going to take away burdens. Candle in the dark is going to break oppression. Candle in the dark is going to do great battles. A candle in the dark is a humble child. That's a great blessing. And the next one, a candle in the dark is to become a sun. Yeah, a sun. A sun. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, God wants us to become sons. You see, a son is someone who has things a little easier than a father. Yeah. That's why I say your marriages are going to be nicer. And, and first love marriages are known for being nice. The few first lovers who married, and I see them, wow, they are on constant honeymoon levels. Like they are maintaining the standard of permanent honeymoon status. It's called PHS. Kabashakaya Some people, by marrying for just a few months, they, don't, they are not close anymore. They don't talk anymore. They don't kiss anymore. They don't play anymore. They don't touch anymore. They are not happy anymore. They don't flow anymore. 
Say, God forbid. Is that what you want to experience? They don't talk anymore. They are not close anymore. They are not happy anymore. They don't smile anymore. Say God forbid. Amen. So, it's very, very important, amen, to be a son. Because when you are a son, whatever your father couldn't do, you are nearer to doing it and starting to do more and maybe failing in some things for your son to come and go further. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. You know, when I was in a university, few people, students had cars. It was very rare to have a car. But now it's very common. Most of the students have cars. When I was a student, few students had fridges in their rooms. It's just a rare. Richard Saki was one of the few people with a fridge. <laughs> yeah. I always remember his fridge. <laughs> now it's his common the fridge is not any special thing. When I was um, when I got married, few people had mobile phone was I remember coming to London and a, a cousin of mine came and showed me. He said, there's a new technology that he brought out a big <laughs> thing like this. He said, this is, can you believe I can just stand here and I can call? And in, in, in Kumasi, we have, we, say, we have, they say, I'm standing outside and I'm speaking. That means that he said, the phone is not connected to a line. All phones were connected to a wire. So it was a miracle. Can, can you believe I'm standing outside and I'm speaking? <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. So you, the sons, you are the sons of those who are using phones with cables in life. So your life is better. So when he says a son is born, it means a better version has come. A better version of life. A better version of ministry. A better version of marriage. A better version of happiness. Yeah. Now, the only way you can attain to a better version is by not despising your fathers, but rather being humble and learning from them. Because the, some of your fathers and your mothers are, were more sincere than you. Look, some of your mothers and fathers, let's take mothers. Some of your mothers were more beautiful than you. You know, you see, you can be beautiful, but when you give birth, your daughter is like, she's not really up to that level of, yes. It's true. You should just see a picture of your mother when she was a princess, pretty princess moving around. I mean, when she shook her bottom once, I tell you. I mean, there were stars, even Venus and others were moving around. The, the planets were just shaking. Many of them do not attain to happiness in spite of their beauty. So as a good child, as a good son, as a good daughter, your duty is not to despise them, but to learn from them. So, no, no I, can, I can have it better than mama. I can have it better than dada. I can have it better than papa. I can do more if I'm humble. I will at least get to where he is faster than I'll go further. And that's why today they are transplanting things. The transplant. First, it was a big thing. When it was open heart surgery, it was a big announcement in the world. I was alive. So there's been the first time a heart has been opened. 
and the heart has been operated on when it's alive, the person's alive. Then they went as far as to transplant. They take out your heart and bring another person's heart and put it inside and sew it up, connect even the nerves that make the heart beat and tell the heart because the heart is always having the instructions beat. Connect all. So, and there's no leakage. And close it and close all the bones. You open these bones like you will lie down like a, a chicken that has opened. Like this. <laughs> and five days, three days, five days, you'll be walking around wow. like with somebody's heart in your heart. And there was a time they didn't even know which direction the blood was going. Like you see in the blood in your veins. You see the blood in your veins. They didn't know that it, it, it goes back. If you lift your hand, then it, it goes back. It was a discovery. It was a, the person who discovered that the blood is... Because how will you know? Yeah. When you cut, you, you can't really see that the blood in the veins is, is not being pumped. It only comes back to the heart. It just comes back from everywhere. And it comes by gravity and by moving your muscles. Yes, that's why when you sit for a long time without moving, then the blood gets blocked there. I'm sure the art students are learning something. Yeah. How many of you are art science students? Let's say science students. Computer science, I don't know whether I will call computer science or science. How many of you are art students? Okay. So whenever the art students, I have to explain a lot of things. Yes, so that the art students can catch up. Art students, you didn't know what I was saying about veins. You didn't know at all. No, Bishop, no. <laughs> you didn't know? No, Daddy. You didn't know? No, no, Bishop. You didn't know? No, Bishop. Oh. <laughs> Art students. It's okay, we take them as they are. So, somebody discovered it like that. So, you see, if you lift your, you see your veins in your, in your wrists, or do you, see, do you have some veins? If you put your hand down, you see the veins. Just leave it there for some time. And you see that the veins come out. Can you see your veins? Yeah. Ben, I can see your veins. Just leave them. You see the veins come? Yeah. So when you lift it up, it, it, they will disappear. And the blood is all going back. It's going back to your heart. Yeah. You didn't know that. <laughs> And then if you put your hand by your, your wrist over here, you can feel your pulse. Yeah. Can you feel it? Yeah. yeah, so it pumps all the way up to there. Right, right by the bone, right by the bone, by your thumb. Yeah. You put your finger there, you can feel the pulse. That's your artery. That's an artery. That one pumps. And it's more muscular. It's pumping from the heart. But when it gets to the end, how will the, how will the blood go back? You understand? Because nothing is pumping it from your fingers back. Yeah. So when it gets there, it comes back by gravity. Or by movement. Yeah. It's just pushing it back. So it gradually comes back by itself. And then the pumping is working. So that was a a discovery. But they've gone far beyond. This was hundreds of years ago. Not so many hundreds, but hundred, couple of hundred or hundred. Now they've gone as far as being able to take out the heart, put it back in. This is fantastic. So a son does like more fantastic things. So you see, as we've been here, 
Lighthouse Chapel International has been here in the UK. We've done something. That, that thing we've done is to discover the blood goes here and comes here. Then you, the sons, you are going to do the heart transplant. Like more fantastic things in the ministry. So just as we have been in the ministry, we've gone to missions, we've been here in the UK, we've been in England, we've been in Europe. You are going to do the heart transplants of ministry. Yes. Heart transplants of ministry. Yeah. Like higher things, greater things for God. Yes. You can hear from my accent, no matter how long I stay in England, I cannot speak <laughs> the way you guys speak. Yeah, no, I, I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm not, not, not that I don't want to speak the way I speak. Because if I really want to, you know, I could do it. <laughs> but that is not the point. Yeah. If I try to speak that up, well, my mouth will start hurting me. But you see, you are a different version. You are going to do more things. Yes, that's what it means. That, that's why he didn't say just and just a child. A, ch- a child, is, a child is different. But a son, this, the father said, this is my son. This is my beloved son. This one is my son. Yeah, this is my son. You see, that's different. In him, I'm well pleased. Yes. So, a son is supposed to be so great that he makes the father almost look a little old or like a little archaic, but you still respect your father. Yeah. And when it comes to the ministry, you get it. The sons are going to do wilder things. Yes. So you guys, you are, you are going to do greater things. So I may just be taking you to Israel for trips, just for you know, tourism, whilst you work for God. And then you go and do wild, wild things for the Lord. Yes. So you have to have a mind that I'm going to be like Jesus. I'm going to be a candle in the dark. A light for Zabulon. A light for Nephtalim. Wherever Nephtalim is and Zabulon is. A name comes to mind. It's it's a a word, Ginger. Ginger is a town in Uganda. I saw it recently by the Lake Victoria. Ginger. God's going to send somebody to Ginger. Yeah. There are a lot of places. A lot of places. Oh, you guys are too soft for such things. Yeah. You sure you're not too soft? Wow. Beautiful. Sit down. Now, are you going to become sons? Hmm? Yeah. Number. What is a son? An improved version of the father. That's what is a son. Improved version. So that's what I was trying to tell, explain you the medical sons. You know, you are, we are improved versions of whatever was there before. Whatever has been discovered, you discover more things. You know, I was at the Kennedy Space Center the other day. I was looking at the rockets, the rocket that went to the moon. Now, when I went there, I saw that going to the moon is now a small thing. It's not something that is two, three days journey there, then back. 
Yeah. It's something they did in the 60s. So when I went there, they had a big sign. And the big sign said, journey to Mars. The main thing they are on is going to Mars. As for the moon, it was in the 1960s that they went to the moon. So the sons of those who went to the moon are going to Mars. I'll say it again. The sons of those who went to the moon are going to Mars. So if your fathers went to the moon, you are going to Mars. So if we have been able to come to England and start in a small, what is the name of that place? Chalk farm. And a small community center. Singing, clapping, singing, clapping, singing, clapping, singing, clapping in the community center. Huh? Do you know what? We had a camp. I don't know the name of the place. Devon. Devon. 44, 44 people. The whole church. Years ago. What was the team of double mega missionary church? People, 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 people cannot, people cannot even come to the camp. There's nothing like camp. It was the first time. It was unheard of to go to a camp. 44 people came. Double mega missionary church. And here we are. I don't know what day is today. What day is today? First day. Yeah, we are here. We are having a camp. Young people. So if we were able to go to the moon, singing, clapping, singing, clapping, singing, clapping, singing, clapping with tambourines, without instruments, then you guys are going to Mars. I don't know. So I can't imagine what is going to be Mars ministry in the UK. Hey. You know, the other day I was in, uh, where were we when we came to Birmingham for some program? What was it recently? Was it a camp? I came. When? In Birmingham? It was a camp? Really? Okay. On my way there, I saw a long line of people, young people. Everybody was young. They were queuing up for something. I was wondering what it was. And I found it was what? Was it a film or something? A concert. A concert, yeah. Plenty. That's why I say that. If we have been able to... This, the work here, Bishop Richard is in his 50s. He's in his 50s. That's journey to the moon. Yeah. We are now talking of journey. To, when I went to Kennedy, I, I was understanding it, the journey to Mars. Now, the big problem they have is they don't know what to do to keep food fresh, to have food from now till they get to Mars. And it's so far that the people who go cannot come back. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of people have signed up. They want to go. When they go, they will not come back. Yes. You are here, you are afraid. They are ready to go. They will not come back. Huh? What a mission. Yeah. No return. Yeah. If they go, they are not coming back. I mean, different things that they are trying to do. But you can see that whatever the fathers achieved. So I went to see the little thing that the space, uh, the astronauts lay in a small room like this at the tip of the at the tip of the rocket. I think they have to be far from the fire. So they are at the top. It's a capsule like this up to here. They lie down, just lie in it. <laughs> But this is a small one now. This is small. Now they've made Atlantis discovery, Colombia, that goes and comes. Yeah. It's amazing. I, I realize that 
fathers uh, achieve something, but the sons, they come and stand on the shoulders of the fathers. And then they do greater things that the fathers couldn't do. Yeah. So, those of you here, don't think that fathers are better or more anointed. You see, I wish people talk more about problems. People tend to talk more about glorious things. So you always get the feeling that everything was like perfect. So then you look at yourself and say that, you know, man, you know, if, if, if only life was like how you are describing it, if only we had this kind of, you know, if things were as good as they were for you, we would be really making it. But I tell you, no, bad, bad. Bad, bad, bad. Things were not easy. And a lot has been accomplished for God. But now, because if each of you is able to win five souls, there's going to be 7,000 people here. 7,000 people listening to what it is to become a candle in the dark. If each of you was to win just five souls, yeah. If you were to believe that it's worth becoming a candle in the dark, a light to Zabulon and Nephtalim, two places, there will be so much difference. Amen. Amen. Are you listening? Yes. yes. And when we went for that little tour, the man who was giving the speech said, because there were children there, and they were young, all of us. He said that you sitting here may be the person who will discover something that will help us to go further because you don't know who is going to do it. Yeah. And you see, they remember the people who helped them to do the things and they name things after people. Yeah. So, I want to encourage you, all right, to become candles in the dark and to become true sons. When you are a son, you will be doing more things. And we who are fathers to you will increasingly be sitting back and wondering what do we do. And then you even have to come and tell us, please, by the age of this, you have to retire. I want you to rest some more. And I say, ha, you want me to rest? Want to retire? I'm going to start a new church. You see. And I'm also going to start a new church. Yeah. That's it. I see see what I can do in my old age for Jesus. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Now, the next thing, a candle in the dark is going to become a good son. And it's going to be, says, and unto us a child is born, a son is given. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. And the government shall be on his shoulder. Amen. Amen. Government. Now, to be a candle in the dark, One of the things is a candle in the dark is to do great government, great leadership. Government is leadership. Now, that is going to be a challenge because the worst quality for people of color is leadership. It's the most difficult thing. You know like how art students really struggle with maths, and science, physics, and chemistry. They really don't understand it much. I mean, they're really, really, really. And some people don't understand maths at all. When they add up, 
they, they, they struggle between 600 and 6,000. Like, when is it 600? Is it 6,000? True or not true? Like, when they finish, it's 6,114 to be 614 or 6,140 or 61,400. It's a problem. They're zeros. Now, in the same way, some people really struggle with leadership. And mostly Africans really struggle with leadership. No matter the reasons they give, or we give, you can only say that there's a big problem to lead, to govern, to decide. Because if you come to Africa, we are like about 1,000 years behind in many things. Yes, but a thousand years. When I went to the Kennedy Space Center, you see, going to a mountain or making a road somewhere is not a problem. How much more going up into the sky to where the stars are and the sun and the moon? You see, the moon, you say, we are going to the moon and we'll be back. And they go and they come. I mean, I saw the rocket physically. There. And the actual spaceship that went to has been to space 20, how many times? 26 times. 33 times Atlantis. It is there for us. The real thing. You can touch it. Yeah. But you go to certain parts of the world and the darkness there, they cannot make just a road from here to here, no matter the reason they give, no matter what they say, it's the greatest full-blown evidence of the inability to lead. They just cannot build, lead, and create. Yes, no matter what they say, and how many reasons are given, they cannot do it. So, leadership is like an emergency study and ability that must be developed. Yes. And if you are ever going to become a light, you need to really know about leadership. So the art of leadership, the good general, what it means to be as wise as a serpent, and especially the art of leadership, how to lead. You see, because I find even... As I've traveled around a bit and so on, I find that even some of the technology and things that we use in Ghana is more advanced than what some of you use here. Yes. Even all the things we do, we use so much advanced things. When we travel and we go to our own churches, who have people who work in where they do these things, they don't seem to know how to translate it from the world they are in into real life and use it there. Because there is no leader in Africa who has not lived abroad before. They have lived, every country they've lived abroad. The president of Togo, he lived, I went to school, I think Harvard. They've lived outside. There's There's nothing like a leader who doesn't know what it is like. But the leadership to be able to do it. Uh That is it. So in the same way, You as a person, you see, you you see us preaching and encouraging you. How do you translate with strength what you see into your real life world now? As you are living, you can lead and be able to translate it. Otherwise, you are just like a a, a, a cow. You know, I've preached to a cow. I was in Newcastle once and I went to a field and preached to a cow. I mean, he was eating his grass and he was just like, I don't know. He just kept chewing and chewing and chewing. He wasn't impressed at all. Didn't he understand? I, was, I said, John 3, 16, God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. He never said amen. He never said hallelujah. He never said nothing. And didn't give his life to Christ. Too. I'm sure by now he's been eating in your hamburgers. So you must see, leadership is not giving of excuses. Leadership is not saying things. It's trying to give excuses why. 
leadership is okay this is the problem and this is the solution that must be found when you're going to space they have to have solutions even now they're trying to find a solution how do we take food to last for so long <laughs> so many days and years others will die in the spacecraft yes how long can you keep food can you keep it for, for years yeah but how and fa- they have written on it failure is not an option because when they are coming back to the earth they have only one chance they have only one chance. When they bend, at a particular point, they turn off the engine for the, the aircraft to fall. Wow. Yeah, to fall at a particular point. It has to fall. The when they turn it off, the power goes off and it falls. And it has to fall at a particular angle. And when it glide, it has no engine. It, it will glide to F. It has to glide to America. It has to glide to where the, where the airport is. Yeah, it has to glide. Yeah, and has to glide through this whole. When you go up, you see blue, and has they have to choose exactly at the point, turn of the edge, and and it goes at a particular angle, goes through the fire. There's a big fireball around the earth. If you remember, once it, it exploded whilst it was going through the fire, yeah, and they solve it, and they do it. So there, you can lead and create and achieve. That is, he said, the government shall be on his shoulders. That's why it's a candle and a light. Yeah. You can lead, can create, can build. And that is something you have to learn how to do. And I can tell you, you can be in England a thousand. Sometimes I meet people say, were you not living in England? You're living in England? Do you know the problems that England has overcome? Do you know the problems that England has overcome? The things that have been done here? Do you know there was malaria in Switzerland? Malaria, all these places had malaria. They've wiped it out. Malaria is actually a sign of undevelopment. Lack of development. Where there's malaria is because there's no, the, the, no water, sanitation, all that is the reason for malaria. You get no mosquito biting you, no England. No. Huh? So we need people who become leaders. So the, all of us here in England, you know, you see, you see a, a, a nation, a very, very great nation that has led and ruled the whole world before. You see, what we don't realize is that in each era, we grow up knowing the greatest. In this era, we've grown up knowing the greatest is America. But it was not so. Before 1945, the greatest was England. England was the great, England was the great country. So even Hitler was hesitant to take on England. Because England was so great. England was the empire. It was called empire. There was a day called Empire Day. It was a holiday, Empire Day. From Australia, as far as to South Africa, to India, to America, all America, they were all colonies of the empire. <laughs> it was the biggest small island. Oh, you don't have an idea how great it was. But in 1945, England turned against Israel. Yeah. They turned against Israel and abandoned them. And that was the beginning of the decline. Yeah, and shortly after that, all the colonies began to rebel. I said, we, want, we, want, we don't want to be under you. India, Pakistan, this, that Africa, Ghana was the first. Every, all of us said, no, 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 no. We won't stay. Leave us to do our own things. In England, the empire became a small island. So, it's a very great nation. But you can be in it and never learn anything. Yeah. It's a nuclear power. It's one of the world powers. It's one of the countries that can fight wars. It's one of the countries that can go to space. 
is a very powerful country with a very wild system of leadership and justice. Many things that are here. But you can be here and you don't learn government. Yes. And all the nations, the Commonwealth nations, have this government that they learn from and all the laws government. It is this country that brought laws against criminalizing gay. Yes. That is it's a crime. It, they are all English laws. Yes. Those laws are from England. They made us write all those laws as a crime. They should be arrested. They should be this. They should be. They are all English laws. <laughs> yeah. And today, all the African countries have those laws. Listen, to lead is what we need. When I send you out on a mission to an island, to many of the places that are waiting for missionaries, as a missionary to England, right here, you are expected to lead a large number of people to know God. And if you, if you don't know leadership, you don't know much. So listen to what I'm saying, all of us young people, because I tell you, I've seen many people go to England, come back, go to America, come. They don't learn nothing. They don't learn anything from being here. It's like a girl who wants to get married. You sit by someone who got married and you don't see the reason why she's married. There's something that she has that you don't have. I was talking to some people the other moment and I was saying, who do you think is going to get married among these girls? And I said, this one is likely to marry. This one, I don't know. Yes. But I know this one is likely to marry. For some reasons. Not from beauty, not from makeup, not from hair, not from any of the things you think. And you are sitting down with a good example sitting next to you. Why somebody got married? People don't marry because they are beautiful or pretty or nice or smelling nice. Maybe you don't know. Now you know. Yeah. So it is important for you, are you listening, to know why is England a great country? And why was it so great? Yes. What did they do? And how to lead in the church so that your leadership will be better than my leadership. Because my leadership has built a church in over 90 countries. All of us are together. And all of us are one, one church, like the Catholic church. All of us are together. Yes. All of us working together. That's what my leadership has been able to do. So your leadership would you be even greater. Amen. Because that is the whole point of a son is that you are better. Amen. Improved version. Yes. Of leadership. Are you there or you are leaving? Amen. Stand up everybody. Bible says the government shall be on his shoulder. The government shall be on his shoulder. Amen. Amen. All right, we are going to take a break in a moment, but before we do, and then it says, and a candle in the dark, it says, and shall be called wonderful. Is everybody awake? His name shall be called wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God. So a candle in the dark, hmm, is to become wonderful. Wonderful. Amen. Amen. Wow. wow. Now, what does it mean to be wonderful? It means many things. Go back to your seats, those of you in front here. Go back to your seats. If your seat has been taken by the time you go by, it's too bad. Everybody say wonderful. Wonderful. 
Lift your hands. And thank God for what you are hearing today. You're going to be a mighty God. You're going to be a mighty, a mighty counselor, a, mighty, a wonderful person. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you for making us candles in the dark. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for helping us to do well. We lift our hands to you and say, Lord, thank you for Zabulon and Naphtali. We shall be there, Lord. We shall be there. We shall be the candle, the light you've called us to be. We give you thanks. We give you praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Sit down for a moment. Take out an offering. Actually, it's an idea. Father, thank you for the blessing that you give to us today. We are grateful, Lord. We thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Ashes, receive the offering. <laughs>